everyone, welcome back to another episode of Farmer George. It's midwinter and a lot of you are planning out what you're going to plant for next year. If you're germinating indoors, that's going to start within the next month or two. And on today's episode, I'm going to show you how to germinate some tricky seeds from some unripened tomatoes and some pepper crosses that I performed over the summer for the first time. On top of it all, I'll show you how to germinate your seeds with items found around the house. In this video, you can stop it after the germination part is over with, but if you'd like to see the progression of the seeds and how they germinate, which ones do, which ones don't, I'm not gonna tell you which, watch to the end of the video. All right, let's go to the garage and see how it's done. All right, so here we are in my garage and I have two unripe tomatoes that I picked seeds from. And if you look at this, you'll see that I only got three seeds there and I think there's one more behind. And then I got a ton of seeds out of the what's what I think is a Piccadilly tomato, but um, I'm not sure that these will be successfully germinated. The other seeds I have are some crosses that I'm working on. First, filial, which means they're the, uh, the first offspring of the cross that I performed. I'm not gonna tell you the the types of peppers that I used, but I want to wait till they ripen first to, to release the, the cross and the names. What I'm doing here is I have some recycled seed pod containers that I cut up. So this is just like a little party dish. I actually used some lunch meat containers as the base. I've improvised my little greenhouse here to start some seeds. So with that, I'm going to just show you real quick how to get these started. I mean, this is just a simple germination. I'm just gonna fill my little seed cells up with, uh, I have some potting soil that has some organic fertilizer feed built in. And you wanna fill up these seed cells about seven eighths of the way, because then you'll drop the seeds directly on top and then just sprinkle an eighth of a layer down. So you wanna kind of not pack it down too much, you want it to be a little airy. This is not seed starting mix. Um, seed starting mix would be the best bet because it's nice and airy and fluffy, uh, but this stuff works just as well. The good thing about this soil is already damp. It's a little bit damp, so I don't have to get it damp before using it, which is what you should do when you're germinating. Just dampen your soil because um, if the seeds dry up, then they'll die. So you need to have nice damp not wet just damp soil and then we'll spray the top with some with some h2o uh, another important thing when you're uh, planting uh, new plants you want to label appropriately i usually like to do three in each just because some seeds aren't viable but i don't have much to choose from so i'm going to do three in this one You don't want to do more than like four in a seed, in a, in a little cell because all the roots get combined and it makes it really difficult when you're transplanting. So that's why I like to do three. So you got three seeds in each of these little sections, my Piccadillies, and then I got two in my Palato tomatoes. So now, I'm gonna do my pepper crosses. This pepper, I only got, let me show you. This pepper, I only got three seeds from. So I only have three seed cells. So I'm gonna put them one in each cell and pray that they germinate because crossing anything is hard work, delicate work. You can see that video. Um, I don't know what episode it is, but it's it's called How to Crossbreed Peppers Outside. Shows you the way I did it. And you can go check it out there. And breed your own. This pepper gave me quite a few seeds. However, the pepper didn't ripen all the way. So, kind of similar situation with these uh, tomatoes. It was just sitting on the plant for so long. I was like, man, I don't want these seeds to go rotten. So I'm gonna take a picture of this setup. I like to track the germination rates of my plants and create a whole Excel sheet and all that jazz, cause I'm a nerd. Then you're just gonna take some soil 
and just lightly cover them up. You don't want to uh, pack this soil down too much, especially the top layer, because you want those seedlings to be able to push through easily. This is just so they stay moist. And this is not fancy at all. It saved me a lot of money and saved me uh, an extra seed tray because since joining the pepper lovers community, people have been so generous in trading their seeds with me that <laughs> I've, I, don't, I haven't even counted the number of varieties of peppers that I can grow next year, but um, I'm gonna need every single seed tray that I have. So, that's that, everything's lightly covered. Next thing I'll do is get a little sprayer or just some, you know, you can just drizzle some water over, over top. I've um, had experience with uh, those seed pellets. They're like peat, made out of peat moss. Um, and you're supposed to soak those things in water and they expand. That's just so messy. This is just super easy. Um, and with the, the plastic top, that you put on, all that moisture stays in. The other thing that's important in germination is a seed heating mat. This thing is the best. So, there you have it. I don't know how tight this fits on, but it was free. Let's go put this thing under the grow lights, turn the heat mat on, and let it go. This is what the heat mat looks like. All you do is just plug it into the wall, and as soon as you plug it into the wall, it turns on. This is really cool because it'll tell you like, okay, let's look for tomatoes, tomatoes. This map even has three languages. It's got English, French, and Spanish. So tomatoes take about six days to germinate with this mat. Um, peppers take between seven to 10. Just wanted to show you this mat. Um, I'm sure there's a ton of them. I got this for like 13 bucks at a hardware store. It's super awesome. Don't germinate without it. It's my number one tip. So, let's take our uh, enchilada tray. It sits right on top. And we'll check back in a couple days. Make sure the, uh, the soil is not drying out because with the heating mat especially, the moisture is gonna evaporate quicker from the soil. Check your soil about every two days. When you do that, it'll ensure that you don't miss any seedlings that sprout early because if your seedlings sprout early, the seedlings are gonna start to grow to the light and then they get long, stringy, leggy, and that means um, they won't be able to su support themselves and they'll fall over and uh, they'll die. So you wanna make sure you're checking for your seedlings um, uh, on top of the, the moisture in the soil. We'll come back in a couple days and check the soil and I'll show you what, what it looks like then. All right, so this is day three after planting these seeds, and I had no idea this was gonna happen this fast, but if you can see this little guy right here, that's one of my Piccadilly tomatoes. It's only been three days, and that's already sprouted, and that was from one of my unripened tomatoes, and we already had success in exactly three days. We'll check back for the other ones, but um, soil and all of these little cups is still, still damp, well, maybe a little bit in the middle I can, can spray here. <clears throat> and we'll check back after more of these seedlings have germinated. All right guys, it's December 16th and it's been exactly one week. So let's check the progress of our sprouted plants. We got all the tomatoes sprouting. Um, and like I said before, I don't really care about the tomatoes. I was just doing an experiment to see if I could get some viable seeds from unripe tomatoes. So that's a success, 100% success. And then it looks like, wow, this is really cool. I got two, I thought I only had one, but it looks like I got two um, of my one set of crossed peppers growing. So that's awesome. I don't have any yet grown from here. So it's been seven days with the heating pad, and then I have grow lights, so it's getting a little heat from the lights, a little heat from the pad. These germinated, some germinated in three days, some germinated in four, but they're fresher seeds, so they, they germinate quicker. These seven days is still really quick to uh, germinate seeds. So I got two sprouted seeds right here. Let's just take a closer look here at these seeds. So you got the little, the seed still on that one, and then 
We got one back there just pushing through. The cross I really wanted to germinate is this one, so hopefully a couple more days here and we'll see more sprouts. It's been 10 days since uh, I started these seeds. You can see all, like we've already talked about, the tomato seeds are, are doing great. I don't need these anymore, so I'm just gonna dump the seeds out. I'm gonna save these little seed pods though for sure. Unfortunately, I would have thought that these seeds would have germinated by now, but they haven't. And I have seeds sprouting from five of the seed pods of this particular cross. When you get to this stage, you want to take the, the, the plastic dome off because you don't want too much moisture that you'll start to develop mold and mildew. You only want that in the beginning to really get those seeds to germinate. So once you get them to an ideal seedling, take that dome off and continue to monitor the soil until you want to transplant them into larger vessels like uh, solo cups or even into pots. But I'm gonna use solo cups because I'm gonna keep them under here until they get a little bit bigger and then transfer them into hydroponic solution. For now, I'm gonna continue to keep these seeds on the heat mat. Hopefully these will germinate. I'm just hoping maybe in a couple more days we'll start to see a sprout, but just gotta monitor this water level because the dome is now off and the, uh, it's pretty dry in here, so the moisture will quickly evaporate. So uh, every day I'll monitor it, give it a couple sprays. So I'm gonna lower my grow light and get the, uh, the light close to these plants, but not too close that they'll burn by the light, but close enough so that the plants don't start to stretch out and grow, kind of like what these tomatoes did. So I wanna put the grow lights probably five inches above the, uh, the little pepper plants, and then we get rid of these tomatoes. All right, so we had some success with the tomato seeds. All of them germinated, and they germinated rather quickly. And that's because they were pretty much fresh seeds, dried a couple of days before I planted them. And they were actually mature seeds in the green tomatoes. So you can, in fact, have mature seeds from unripened fruit. And that's true too with peppers, because my successful of the two pepper crosses actually came from an unripened fruit as well. Uh, the pepper wasn't completely ripened, but I picked the seeds that looked the most mature. And it's it's safe to say that my other pepper cross, unfortunately, the ones I really wanted to germinate, uh, did not germinate. So I'm gonna go ahead and keep these uh, ungerminated seeds on the heating mat with the successful cross that I have growing right now in hopes that one day they'll, they'll sprout. But uh, it's been over two weeks and I doubt they're gonna sprout. It's safe to say if you don't have peppers sprouting after two weeks, um, they're probably duds and they're not viable. But you can prove me wrong. And uh, if, you, if you have success stories uh, you know, longer than two weeks, let me know below and I'd sure be interested. Thanks everyone for watching. I hope this, this video helped you out, gave you some tips and tricks on how to germinate some seeds. If you liked the video, please hit this pepper logo up top. Please leave me a like, a comment as always. Let's share and grow together. Thanks and have a great start to your new year.